welcome, 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 everyone, to another episode of Rich Man Training the Entrepreneur Podcast. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to say thank you to all the followers and the listeners. We've actually crossed over 8,000 Instagram followers. Facebook, we just traveled to about 1,800 followers, so this is doing very well. And we just bring great content, good stuff to everybody here. And I'm very excited about the person we have today. This guy is, you know, a legend. I mean, literally a legend. Wow. With his magazine called wow. Magazine. <laughs> um, but on top of that, uh, this superstar who I have here is Joseph Bonner. This guy is a media proprietor. He just has done so many great things with iHeartRadio, with his own broadcast, and just all the great things and winning awards and, and producing. And just, I, I can't say enough about this guy. Here. So, what we're going to talk about here, here with, with Joseph is we want to talk about media and the business of media and how do you get into it and even talk a little bit about his entrepreneur um, kind of journey, journey from where he went. I know he was working in, uh, in uh, education prior to going to media, but the transition yeah. period because it's just um, it's a, actually a fascinating story. I met with him in San Diego maybe about a year ago. We had dinner and we chatted and I just, just found the man very genuine, very fascinating and I thought he's just going to be a great value for all the entrepreneurs who really want to learn about the game media. So no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So Joseph, why don't you tell us a little bit about your transition from um, education and moving into media? Well, first and foremost, let me say uh, thank you for taking the time to do this and to have me on your um, show. I appreciate that. And uh, I definitely don't consider myself a legend, but just like all you guys out there that are, that are working hard to pursue your dreams and to push for your goals, um, I definitely am in uh, that category with you, and uh, I appreciate uh, uh, the people that have come into my, I guess you could say my circle, that have definitely facilitated my personal and professional development and my um, uh, professional growth, uh, for sure. Um, but let me, uh, I guess let me tell you that, yeah, in education, I worked there for over 10 years. I loved it. I love kids. I love, I love families. I love working with educators. Um, but for me, I honestly felt that um, I felt limited in what I was able to do um, mm -hmm. and limited in what I was, a how, how much I was able to help uh, the young people that I was working with. So part of my, the reason why I transitioned into the media was because I felt that I could have a more profound impact on people and youth if I took my voice to a, a larger platform. Okay. Excellent. And talking about your voice, I know a lot of the stuff that you're doing right now and I, is helping kind of bring awareness to some of the injustices that's happening around not just the U.S. continent, but around the world. And I really enjoy yeah. the posts that you're doing on just, you know, bringing that to the forefront. And um, tell us, why did you kind of want to, you know, I, I know there's so many different ways you can go on media, but what inspired you or encouraged you to want to start bringing these um, social injustices up to the surface? Man, I, I really, 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 really hate injustice, and I, I, I hate it with a passion so much. You know, I think the, one of the first major uh, stories that I covered in the news was uh, Jordan Lewis. Mm -hmm. He was a young man who committed suicide at the age of 14, and he was on the football team, and he was bullied by some of his football buddies, and... Mm -hmm. The father was just devastated. So I reached out to the father to talk a little bit about the situation, what the father was going through. And for me, like talking to him and hearing not only his profound loss, mm -hmm. but then me listening to the story and seeing so many things that happened that went wrong that could have been prevented. And me just thinking in the back of my mind, like, man, I wish I would have known about this before this young man took his life, you know, especially with my background in education. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like stories like that that motivate me to to want to tell these other stories and to want to kind of share some insights to give people a fighting chance to live and to, to have a chance to, to get justice while they're still alive instead of it always ending in tragedy, you know? Oh, and, and thank you for sharing that. And a lot of times when I explain to entrepreneurs about going to anything that you do, you need to be passionate about what you're doing. And obviously, you're very passionate about helping the youth and bringing the social injustice to the forefront. I see what you post on LinkedIn, on um, Instagram, and um, all whatever platforms that you're particularly on. I you know, really appreciate all that you're doing. So I, um, tell us a little bit about you know, the media world and for a new entrepreneur who says, Hey, you know what? I want to get in the media 
And I think this is the avenue I want to use to get my voice out there. Kind of elaborate a little about that. Well, uh, you know, getting into media, especially when you're starting out from scratch, you know, um, <laughs> no experience whatsoever. And so for me, it was just a matter of like, okay, well, I know how to do research. That's one thing I can do. And okay. I definitely have passion about the stories that I would cover. So it's just really a matter of doing the research, put, you know, knowing how to write and putting the story together and then creating a platform to kind of tell that story. And one of the reasons why I felt it was so important for me to, to do this on my own is because, um, you know, the media world is very, very unique. It's like every, every media platform has their own angle. They have their own stories. They have their own time frame to which a story would be most appropriate. Mm -hmm. And so you may pitch a story, but it may not be at the, at the appropriate time for that particular media source. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that I can't tell my story? Absolutely not. Like I don't want to be stifled by someone else's agenda. So for me, it was really important that I don't uh, allow myself to be limited by someone else's agenda. So create my own platform so that I can tell my story like I want. To. Does that make sense? It makes well, very well sense. And um, I know you do a good job of telling the story the way you want to. And I think you do a good job of articulating and communicating those stories from, that. you know, the perspective of a lot of us who are suffering from social injustice. So, you know, kudos to you for being able to do that, because I know there are, um, say, you know, I don't know the specific term, but basically there are some regulators out there that prevent the true story from getting out. And I know uh, Donald Trump has been known to say fake news. And maybe I just want to talk about a little bit about that. Um, do you really feel that the news has been kind of perverted with um, untruths? Well, I, I definitely stay politically neutral. Uh, okay. So even when um, news agencies cover political topics, I just watch I don't comment on the political issues. Okay. Um, I will say this, you know, I've had an opportunity to um, expose injustices on governmental levels. I can say yes. that. Um, for example, in the case where there was a young child who was being sexually abused, mm -hmm. and not only did I, you know, report the incident to the government, it, the government sat on this story for six months mm -hmm. to a year, and this was actually the Australian government. And I stayed on them, you know, and they got a little bit scared and they kind of tried to threaten me to kind of silence me. But you guys know I don't say silence. I don't care. What you, <laughs> you going to do? You in Australia. I'm over here in the U.S. What you going to do? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> but when it, com when it comes to uh, injustices, I don't care where the injustices come from. I feel that someone should be able to tell the story. Sure. And I, I will do that, and even if that means that people hate me for it. It's like I'm going to tell the story. Mm -hmm. You know, so, but one good thing is that when I, there was a, I guess the government of Eritrea um, was persecuting the religious group of Jehovah's Witnesses out there. And that, you know, the persecution is actually still ongoing. But I remember about three years ago when I wanted to pick up the case, I started reporting on the case. I started doing like a huge um, social media campaign to kind of expose the truth, reached out to the human rights organizations, reached out to the United Nations, did all this research, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the good thing about it is that the United Nations did open up an investigation against the country of Eritrea, and they did release six prisoners who were imprisoned, um, which was part of the report that I had done three years ago, um, but the religious persecutors were, st were stayed in jail. So, I mean, I saw some results from the case, but they're not yeah. the results that I always that I wanted to see. So, in the media world, it's like you do want to push for justice, for yeah. legal justice, especially when the governments have already established the laws. And so, it's not changing laws. It's just like, no, no, just abide by the laws that you already have. And if you're not, then I'm going to call you I'm gonna, we're going to hold you responsible and accountable for that. And so those are the media stories that I really like to cover because yes. other people don't cover them. Mm -hmm. And if someone needs to speak uh, for these people who are being victimized, you know. And again, just thank you for all the you know, work that you do to help bring these things to the forefront. So kind of another question is, and it's something that kind of just chimed in my mind. You talked about the resilience that you hold. And a lot of entrepreneurs out there don't realize there comes – that kind of point where, you know, it's almost a breaking point and you have to have the resilience to kind of keep pushing forward. And I know from your perspective, you're fighting, you're fighting with governments or not fighting, but just basically covering governments. And you're fighting with the no, I don't want to say fighting with governments, no. but you're covering different stories around the whole world. And I know that it has to come to some point 
where you're getting so much pushback that you have to stand your ground instead of resilient in what you're doing. And this holds true to any entrepreneur, no matter what you're doing, if it's media, if it's um, internet market, whatever it is, you have to have that resilience. So tell us a little bit about, you know, from your perspective, what, what, what type of resilience or what type of gut do you have to have or heart, you know, that you have to have to continue to be successful at what you do? Oh man, honestly, there has there there come there has to be fearlessness. Like you cannot be timid when you when you cover stories like this, especially when you know that there are a lot of powerful people out there that may not want the stories told or may mm-hmm. try to um, I guess you could say twist the truth. And so th- there has to be no fear um, in that process. And I don't have the fear. Like I'm not really I don't you know I. I I like what I do and I'm not afraid of what could happen. It's like, I've been through some pretty rough things in my life. So mm-hmm. like, like there's not much more you can do except kill me. And, <laughs> and even if you did, I would be okay with that because it's not like I would feel it. I'd be dead. So it's like, either way, I'm good. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, all right. So, you know, so, but with that definitely comes uh, a commitment to make sure that I, I, I express these stories in the most, I guess you could say honest and ethical way. Yes. Um, but at the same time, in a way that's respectful. Like I definitely see that's the thing about it is like although I may cover these stories, I still try to remain extremely respectful um, to the government um, who you know may be in violation of human rights issues. It's not a matter of um, making them feel so horrible and disrespecting them. No, it's just a matter of holding yes. them accountable to the laws that they themselves have established. That's it. And and again, I, you know, I really do appreciate just all the work that you're doing and that that perspective of just the, having the resilience in the heart to even where you're willing to lay it out your own life. You're willing to put that on the line. And I think um, a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize that is what's necessary for you to win at any level. If it's media, if it's um, athletics, whatever it is, uh, or you know, starting a business, you have to be willing to sacrifice your life literally for what you're doing. Yeah. Um, that, that's the truth yeah, of the matter. It's it's all or nothing. And um, this kind of transition a little bit about your magazine, Legend Magazine. Um, I know the CEO there, you're the editor. I know you've done a phenomenal job with uh, publishing people and just getting your stories out there through your magazine. So tell us a little bit about your magazine and how it is to run a magazine from CEO's perspective. Oh, great question. Um, well, the magazine, I run, I actually have run two magazines. Mm-hmm. Legend Magazine is one of them, the Joseph Magazine is another. And yes. both magazines, I guess you could say cover different topics. So Legend Magazine mainly focuses on business, um, fitness, and fashion and okay. lifestyle. So it's like a lifestyle magazine. Lifestyle magazine. So we definitely cover celebrity stories too, but we don't cover them in the form of like tabloid news, like, oh, guess who's having a baby? Like, okay. That's cool, you know, for others to do that. I, I, I rather would, I'd rather take a story of a celebrity and find out what they're doing to inspire the community. And mm-hmm. so what we'll do is we'll take that story and then we'll share that with our readers so that our readers can be inspired. You know, I think that if they already look up to these people for one thing, for, for their yeah. acting or their singing. So let's find something that they're actually doing that's helping the community and let's learn from yeah. that. So that's kind of the, the objective of Legend Magazine and, and okay. why I put that out. Yeah. And Joseph Magazine is the same, the same idea, but we cover health, mental health, self-health. Um, so really taking, you know, people and their health uh, very seriously with that magazine and helping them to see that, you know, no matter what they're facing, whether it be post-traumatic stress, depression, mm-hmm. suicidal thoughts, uh, whatever, that there is support out there in the form of, you know, self-help, in the form of, you know, psychiatrists, or in the form of medication, if that is what your, you know, doctor prescribes. And so we should definitely try to cover all bases, you know, but still inspiring. Yeah. Yes, yes. So you have the Joseph magazine that definitely focuses more on the, like I said, the personal aspects, mental health, physical. We have the Legend magazine that's more that focuses, kind of shines light on the good that some of the celebrities are doing and just um, the lifestyle, leisure type of magazine, correct? Right, exactly. Okay, we got you there. Now, I know you have a also a podcast. So yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about your podcast and you know, um, maybe we start about what does it take to create a podcast and what inspired you and what your podcast is about. Oh my goodness, man. I remember when I first had my first podcast like four years ago. Yes. I don't know what I was talking about. I was, <laughs> I was just on there talking. I don't even know. But it was really cool because like it was definitely a cool learning process for me. You know, I, def- I think when I first started, I was like interviewing like business professionals and finding out how they launched their careers and uh-huh. you know it was it was cool I, I liked it um 
as I continued to do it, I kind of found where, what my niche was. Like, I'm like, oh, well, I'm really big on self-help and helping people. So let me find a way to do that. And then I got uh, uh, certified as a first responder in mental health. Oh, so nice. then I said, well, let me take that approach with my show and like provide some nice, loving encouragement to everybody. So, so that's what we've been doing with the show for the past three years. Um, we've just now, um, we're adding April Simpson. She is a longtime uh, journalist um, to the show. She'll be joining our show this month and she'll be hopping on doing our news, breaking news segments and our He Said Cease. Our, uh, I, was, I was having this tongue twister when I had her on the phone today. It's called He Said, She Said. So okay. we're going to be covering a topic where me and her will kind of go at odds and, you know, discuss our different views on the topic and uh, April's a really cool person, and I'm super excited to be working with her on, on that aspect of the show. But definitely, definitely enjoying the process and, and growing and learning and loving it. You know? So how many listeners do you have today on your podcast? Um, and tell us on what platforms you, you actually have your podcast. Great question. Great question. So we're distributed on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and then we're also all over social media and things of that nature. So okay. per promoted show, we have a 10 million target reach. So that's okay. per promoted show. So um, that's one of the cool things about it is that when I first started out, I think the first month, the first month that I started podcasting um, with the Joseph Bonner show was called the Joseph Bonner Morning Show. I think the first month we reached by 400 to 500, no, 500,000 the first oh, wow. month. Uh, and I was like, that's crazy. You know, I was like, oh, okay, I, I can do this. You know what I mean? I was like, all right. That was like my little motivation. And then as I got better with marketing, as I got better with pushing out the show, we've been able to, to, to do 10 million per show, uh, per promoted show. So yeah, I, I love it, you know, and I, I'm still learning and growing, you know, but it's, it's fun. I love, I love, I love, I love what I do. And I love, I love marketing yes. what I do as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so let's transition and talk about a little bit about marketing because I found out as I'm building the rich man training platform, how important marketing really is to get out there. And some people get frustrated because they, they do a podcast or they do or I put whatever they're out, out there. If it's a blog, blog, whatever it is. And they're like, they go one person to look at it. And, um, no, I don't think they truly understand or appreciate the aspects of being able to effectively market what you're doing. So tell us a little bit about the importance of marketing and maybe give us some tips on how do you market? Okay. Um, I think it's really important to first recognize that marketing should not be a one person effort. <laughs> I think with business owners, <laughs> with business owners, especially when you, when you build your business and you develop it, you're really focused on trying to, trying to grow, you know, mm -hmm. and you, it's really hard to focus on more than one thing. You know what I mean? Cause mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you wear so many different hats in business, it's hard to do everything great. It just really is. And so marketing is one aspect of the business, whereas you got to do everything else as well. So I think with marketing, you should really not go at it alone. You should definitely um, hire support or even find interns that will be, that are willing to support you. Um, so that's, that's what I would recommend. There are, there are people who are finishing high school or just getting out or still in college who are looking for just an opportunity to grow with their experience. So reach out to some of the local colleges and community colleges even and universities and find students who are looking for internships and then offer um, that experience and maybe a certificate of completion and, you know, a letter of recommendation for the work that they do. And then, don't expect them to just know what to do, then guide them in the process of how you want your company to be presented in the public eye. Um, I think it's really important too that everybody that I have that markets with me, I develop everything on their social media. So I build their social media platforms. I, I build their, pro, their social media image. I build their whole online image because I also have experience in branding. Mm -hmm. So I brand them completely. So on all platforms before they even start working for me and my marketing team. So that when they start marketing, people can go online and see, oh, these people are credible and they're connected with a credible company. So I don't just send like some little, uh, you know, intern out there and be like, yeah, just start sending out emails. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. Now let me brand your whole platform. Let me brand your Twitter, your Instagram, your Facebook, your, um, you know, everything. Once yes. I build that up and then I'll, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. And I think for me, like I, we just added one new young man to our team uh, actually yesterday. So he, uh -huh. so he said, yeah, he gave me the thumbs up uh, yesterday. So last night we built his Twitter page, his Instagram page, his LinkedIn page, and his Facebook page. His Facebook page already has 100 likes. It's been less than 12 hours. Already had 100 likes. 
Um, his Instagram page already has 70 likes. Again, less than 12 hours. His Twitter page, I think it's up to like, I don't know what his Twitter page is. I haven't checked his Twitter page yet. And his LinkedIn, that's the one that's going to be able to go hard to grow. That one's going to take a little okay. bit of time. But I think last time I checked, about five hours ago, it was like at 12, which is fine. Yes. Um, so, you know, but, but he's branded. So everything is, he's set up for success now. And so now it's just a matter of me uh, training him on Wednesday on how I want it done, how, what I expect. And, mm -hmm. and now he has the training, he has the platform, and then I just send them out there to go do what they do. And then every week I check in them to check on their progress, to see how they're doing, to see where we need to make adjustments in our marketing pitch. And that's really cool for me because that frees up my time to focus on writing, to focus yes. on publishing, and to focus on my radio broadcast. Um, but, I, but I do got to make sure that the people that join me are trained. You know, I got to train them. So, and that doesn't take that long. And you train them for like, what, a, a day, and then it frees you up for a month. You know what I mean? So it's, it's worth the time. And I think that's really cool that you actually invested in the people, even the entrepreneurs, not entrepreneurs, but uh, interns, um, getting them involved because it goes a long way. It really does. When you're investing in these folks, yeah. you know, helping them develop, it actually helps. It's a two-way, you know, you guys are shaking each other's hands or scratching each other's backs. And I utilize a lot of different folks in that particular manner on the back end as well. Um, and you talked a little bit about branding. I know it's so important to keep a consistent brand across different platforms. And I noticed when I looked at a lot of different entrepreneurs out there and I'm looking at what their brand is or what Santa is representing, um, it's so kind of inconsistent if it's on Instagram or if it's on Facebook or if it's on Twitter or if it's Snapchat, whatever case is. And I do understand each of those platforms are used in a little bit of a different way, but you still want to keep the brand the same across the board. And tell us a little bit about the importance of that and how it's helped you. I think what you're, I know you're getting worried about 50,000 strong on LinkedIn or somewhere around there. And um, yeah. I'm not sure about your Twitter or anything else. Maybe talk, um, articulate how strong you are as far as members and followers on those platforms. But tell us a little bit the proper or the, you know, some of your tidbits on how do you brand across those, all, every, basically all the platforms. Well, like you said, I think it's, it's really important to make sure that you stay consistent with the brand. Um, what, what some companies, and even some entrepreneurs, some entrepreneurs have divisions of the same brand. So for example, let's say an entrepreneur who's also, like for me, like an entrepreneur who's also in publishing also has a radio show. So those are, those are consequently two different brands under one umbrella company, you know? Mm -hmm. So they both operate under ICAST Media Network, as an LLC that I, that I own and operate. Mm -hmm. So that means for me, I have to make sure that each of those brands are developed individually while they fit under the same umbrella company. And so my magazine is, pub is branded one way, whereas my radio show is branded another way. So I try not to mix the brands unless there's a reason to, you know, cross mix a promotion. Um, but you're, you're right. It's you got, is if you have more than one brand under your company, you need to make yes. sure that each of them are branded separately. I think that's important to remember. And that's, that's definitely good because I know as entrepreneurs, we talk about um, generating revenue through different lanes. And yeah. um, even myself, I make it a, you know, very conscious decision not to cross brand very much as I own um, a publishing company myself and I own um, a technology company and a couple other companies I have some vested interest in. And I make it a point, even Rich Man in Training, I don't kind of bleed over. I make them an independent brand and I use those brands across different platforms. And I just think it's so important for people to understand that because a lot of them don't understand really get how to effectively brand. And I didn't in the beginning either. I was all over the place. <laughs> I was throwing this yeah. out, this yeah. out there and their case is. And I realized there was some inconsistencies across there when I got somebody who was really efficient at branding, looked at it and said, you know, you're all over the place. You need to kind of make it very consistent and keep things separate. So right. no, you're wrong. excellent. So we, we talked about, you know, you have the Joseph Bunner magazine, um, or Joseph, that's the magazine, correct? Yeah, just, magazine. I just, just want to be sure I get that right. I guess it should have been the Joseph Bonner magazine. That would have made sense. That's That's right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. You're, you're, you're the expert branding. Come on, man. So, just so, Joseph is easier to say. You know, I'm like Joseph Bonner. That's a really I, I long think, name. But, but I think Joseph Bonner is so cool. It's like that. That's, that's a stud's name. Joseph Bonner. <laughs> That's a stud. Yeah, that's a really well name. It was like, eh, Joseph. Yeah, Joseph. <laughs> but I, when, I, when I say your name, it's so funny because I say your whole name. When I ever talk, and I don't just say Joseph, I say Joseph Bonner, you know, Joseph Bonner, that's what I say. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. I like that. I like that. No, I so like it, that. Just, it, just, it just helps. Um, outside of that, 
I know from you building your social media, what kind of tidbits could you give to help people grow their social media? Because I, I think you've done a fantastic job as far as building Thank your you. brand, um, getting your content out there. And I see people who do halfway decent job at building their brand, you know, getting a nice brand and everything else. And I see some people who do kind of a decent job in building their content, but they're asking, well, wow, why hasn't my social media grown? I'm still at 500 or maybe a thousand or a couple thousand people. It's been two or three years and I'm only getting one like or whatever the case is. So is there any insight, any hacks per se that you can maybe share with the audience on how you've been able to grow your platforms to tens of thousands of people? Well, I'll break it. I'll break it down by platform because every platform is different, and so you have okay. to try different approaches for different yes. platforms. I'll start off with LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a great platform for networking and growing a professional network. But what people yes. really appreciate on LinkedIn is they appreciate honesty. They okay. appreciate authenticity. Yes. Um, so even if I, I would even say a little bit of vulnerability. Yes. And not, and 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 also on LinkedIn, posts that are more related towards oh, and a, a great accomplishment that you just achieved. Okay. So people on LinkedIn are really big on you being honest, a little bit vulnerable, and open yes. about your experiences, your struggles, as well as achievements. Those are the posts that tend to go the furthest. And even though you may have people who will jump on your post and speak negatively uh -huh. um, about something about something that you feel very honest and, and passionate about, that's yes. okay. You have to be okay with that. Um, and understand that their comments on that post still enhances the reach of that post. So yes. let them comment because when they comment, it now their whole network sees what you what you're writing, and then somebody from their network they jump in and support you. You know, so um, that's 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 really the the end with LinkedIn. People, it's not just about promoting. You know what you got going on. Oh, I have this. I'm selling this. I'm selling this. I mean, that's good. You you, you do want to do that too, but most of your posts should really be content that people can really sink their heart to. Uh, for Twitter. Yes. Um, opinions matter. You know, people are very opinionated on Twitter. Yes. And people pay attention to opinions on Twitter as well. And so I think one of the ways that has helped me to grow my Twitter uh, following is um, talking about things that are trending and relevant mm -hmm. that I have an honest opinion about. Okay. Um, so, for example, when I jumped on a topic, um, I guess you could say about a. Yeah, I jump on a lot of topics, actually. I jump on so many things. I can't keep count of how many topics I jump on. Ten topics a day. Um, <laughs> you know, news topics and everything. So whatever. I mean, and people, but people will respond to that. People will retweet it. People will start following you because of that. So I try I try to be very honest and open. And also, I'm very opinionated anyway. So that's just who yes. I am. Um, and you'll have people who respect that on Twitter. So if you jump on some of those posts on, like, on, like you know, on some of the news platforms or some of the, the bigger, larger, you know, I guess you can say, uh, Twitter accounts, and you say mm -hmm. something that's relevant, or even on a trending subject, then yes. people will recognize that. That's how you grow your Twitter. Okay. Um, Instagram, people are really big on video. I'm just to be honest. Videos are the thing, you know, mm -hmm. and photos, um, rele relevant and consistent content. So yes. if whatever your brand is, if you're a, a hair brand or whatever, then post <laughs> pictures regularly about, you know, the haircuts that you do. And then you're going to find followers that like that. And then you have to use relevant hashtags to whatever your profession is. And so if I'm, um, if, let's say I'm in, I'm in, let's say I'm in marketing, mm -hmm. I'm not going to use the hashtag marketing because that's just dumb, right? If I'm in marketing, I don't want other people who are marketing to see my posts. No, mm -hmm. if I'm in marketing, I'm going to target people that, I'm, that, I, that I feel are prospect clients. So I'm going to use their hashtag. I'm going to use the hashtag that they use yes. so that what they'll see my post. You know, I don't need to see other people who are doing what I'm doing to see my post. That's, just, that's, that's irrelevant. So if I want to sell a book, then I need to find people who would, are more inclined to buy my book. If it's a book about bullying, then maybe yes. I'm going to ha use the hashtag family, family goals, you know, uh, family outing, family picnics, stuff like mm -hmm. that, that things that families are posting on so that when they, when they go to that, you know, that, that Twitter trend or that hashtag trend on Instagram, they'll see my post as well. And then there, there's some relevance that I'm adding to it. So you really got to be smart about how you do that. Well, thank you for sharing all those things about um, building out as far as social media, because I know so many people are kind of fumbling through, even I did in the beginning, fumbling, fumbling through, I'm trying to figure this thing out. There's a lot of it was kind right. of experimentation, hit and miss, and you hit it right on the nose about as far as, you know, the type of contents or whatever platform 
it does matter on you know about the on LinkedIn or it does matter on the videos and um, the images that you post on Instagram and it does matter yeah. about the Twitter the opinions um, jumping on certain things and giving your honest opinion about those different things because those are different mediums people are using to communicate. Um, through the social media platforms and um, you're, you're right you know you're not trying to sell people you're trying to be authentic and not trying to be you are being authentic and you are sharing honest opinions and you are showing people who you are and there's some vulnerability even myself I've learned to be a little bit more open and not seem so kind of um, scripted and professional because people want authenticity they want people to be honest we're tired of all the fakeness and everybody trying to be perfect yeah. we truly are I mean, Honestly, uh, when I first started, I was trying to you know, be all perfect, but I realized I was only getting one click. And when I said, you know what, screw it, I'm going to open up. I'm going to tell people who I am. I'm going to show people who I am. And it's starting to blow up. Just boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, people really love me for who I am. And it feels better. It truly does. If, you know, I, yeah. I'm happy that I can share who I am as a person on all the social medias and I'm getting a lot of support, but you're right. There's going to be some crazy naysayers that <laughs> I've had some people say some crazy things. I really, but you know, in the same time, you, you have to appreciate the fact that they, 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 you have to appreciate their perspective. You don't have to like it, but they're giving you perspective. And like you said, if they comment, all their friends are going to see that comment and they're going to see what you're doing. So there you go. <laughs> that, that's and, what and I, yeah. And it's, I agree. And I think it's important to understand that when you're on social media to to just respect people's opinions. Like everybody doesn't have our your experience. And so Correct. understand that people may disagree because they've never had that experience. So yes. you just have to understand that that their their limited experience and their own perspective on things is going yes. to definitely affect the way they view things. And so it's it's a just be I guess you could say cordial to disagree. It's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. You don't got to get hurt or mad. Like, I don't know. I hate you. You're like, oh, okay. You know, I, I, I tell people when they, when they hop my post and they say, well, no, you're wrong. I don't like, I just say, you know, I understand. I say, I understand your feelings yes. and I understand that it's not your experience, but yes. I appreciate your comment. And I move on. It's like, I'm not going to argue with people. I, I, you know, I can't lose focus. But if you start losing focus on negativity, even cool. online, you don't reach your target goal. There's no time to be distracted by negativity, even by people's um, uh, opinions. Of you you got to push that to the side and focus on your goal. Absolutely. And you couldn't say it any better. You can't be distracted, distracted by negativity. Don't let it suck you in. You need to stay positive and just keep pushing forward as you go towards your goal. So I do appreciate that. Well, I, you know, thank you for coming on to the show where the case is. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. <laughs> and um, just it, you've just been wonderful. And I really appreciate all that you're doing and just all the honest work that you're putting out there and all the great content. And um, tell people how they can get a hold of you to get some of maybe your assistance because I know that you do help different organizations with their marketing. I do know that you have um, spots in your magazines that you can help promote to all the millions of followers that you have either on your podcast or your subscribers that you have going on. And um, tell us a little bit about how those folks can reach out to you to get some of your help as far as developing their brand and marketing. Uh, well, I guess the easiest way to reach out to me would be uh, via social media. Just just type in Joseph Bonner. I should be the first one to pop up on Facebook, and okay. LinkedIn, and all that stuff. Um, if you want to email me, you can do that too at JB. It's super easy to remember. At josephbonner.com. Okay. JB. Hey, me. So, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so what do we got? What do we offer? So it's kind of like, you know, a lot of people will pay uh, PR firms to kind of, you know, get them publicity and magazines and radio and stuff we just offer features we just offer magazine and radio features and even though they are sponsored features yes. um, and we do let our audience know that it's a sponsor people still respect an article and they still respect the interview more than they respect just an ad yes. so uh people who sponsor interviews and sponsor whether they're radio interviews or magazine interviews uh, readers will readers and listeners still value those things they still respect them way more than they'll just respect an ad place so I okay. definitely encourage people to uh, invest, even if it's not with our company, invest in, you know, a featured post and uh, sponsor, featured sponsor, sponsored interview. Uh, people respect those things more than that. And ads are very effective, but uh, <laughs> sponsored interviews are more effective. And that's what we offer. So. And a lot of other people offer. So. <laughs> 
Well, again, I really appreciate all the wisdom you kind of bestowed on the, uh, the a lot of people. The, a lot of folks, listeners are beginning entrepreneurs. They want to understand media. They want to understand social media and how to use all the multimedias on um, building their brand and getting out there. So again, I thank you for coming on to the show. I do really appreciate you. You know, you, it's open door whenever you want to jump on here and kind of spit some of your game to the listeners. It's an open invite. Feel free. And um, definitely, we're going to do some work together because I really love what you're doing. I love the honesty and the authenticity city that you bring to the table why i see a lot of trash and garbage out there in the world but there's truth in what you're doing so with that being said um joseph honor thank you very much you've been awesome and um that's all i have unless you got something else oh thank you so much for having me on the show i do want to mention one thing because this is something i forgot to mention is that i just launched an anti-bullying program uh, a month ago okay um and the reason why i launched the program it's a free program nationwide um but it's designed to um, help parents who are having difficulties getting help and support with their child's bullying situation. Okay. A lot of kids are committing suicide from bullying, and a lot of parents are feeling lost, and they're not knowing really what to do to handle those situations. And so okay. the new program that I started is just a source to, to kind of guide parents through the process of, of, of working with the schools and making sure that their children stay safe um, through the process. Um, so I really feel passionate about that, and I offer it free to the nation and to actually to the world because I want I don't want any parent to feel that they can't get it because they can't afford it. So it's an absolutely free program. Mm-hmm. Um, you can actually visit the program from my website josephbonner.com under our program section. Okay. Uh, but if you know anybody that's dealing with bullying and they need help, you know definitely reach out to us. We are here to support for free um, because that's what I want to. Okay, wonderful. And I'll be sure I get that link out in um, this interview. And I'll be sure that we get all your information out to all the listeners who want to work with you or learn from you and just to follow you and all your podcasts. So again, thank you very much for coming onto the show. I'm really excited. We Actually, this is going to be show number seven. So thank you. <laughs> it's, working out, it's working out very well. We're very excited about getting all this good content to the entrepreneurs and getting them some exposure to people who've already got the experience and can help them through their journey. So with that being said, that's all I have. Um, you can catch me on at Rich Man in Training on Facebook. You can catch me on Instagram at Rich Man in Training. Um, we've got some new website. That's www.richmantraining.com. And um, I don't know if there's anything else. I think that's all I got. So I'm out. That's it. That's it. <laughs>